Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm your host D-Day bringing you more of my Immersive Engineering Mod Spotlight, specifically for Minecraft 1.18. So for this Mod Spotlight, the mod pack that I'm using is All the Mods 7. And uh, what we're going to be working on today with Immersive Engineering is how to make power. And specifically the first way to make power that I'm going to work on is going to be with the kinetic dynamo and we are going to be building uh, a water mill uh, as you can see i've built one already so that i could get the dimensions and everything down and then we'll build one together so that you guys know how to put it together and there's a specific reason why i have these two close together so that's going to be a surprise for the end of the episode let's go ahead and jump in here we can use our refined storage to make crafting a little bit easier for this guy we're going to need water wheels and that's why we needed steel from our uh, blast furnace last time. So water wheels, they generate a certain amount of RF based on how many water blocks move the water wheel. And each kinetic dynamo can su support up to three of these water wheels. So we're going to make three of these water wheels. So we need 12 of these water wheel segments. Let's go ahead and make those. Let's see if I got enough. 12 of the segments, and we got steel in our inventory, right? One, two, three. So there's three of our water wheels. And we need to make another kinetic dynamo, which this guy's pretty simple. Redstone, iron, and a copper coil block. And the copper coil block requires eight of these LV wire coils. And the LV wire coils, they require copper wire from immersive engineering. So to do that, we need copper plates, which I've already hammered out with uh, the engineer's hammer. We can make eight of these guys real quick, and we can use our wire cutters, of course, for this, so that we can do this manually. Later on, we can get uh, the metal press up and running. Now that we're working on passive power generation, that shouldn't be a problem. So let's go ahead and make eight of these guys. That uses some of the durability of the engineer's wire cutters. And let's grab the wire coils. There we go. Just surrounded in sticks. We have eight wire coils and now we can turn it into a copper coil block and again into the kinetic dynamo. So this is really all we need uh, to to make the water wheels. We need it one kinetic dynamo and we need three water wheels and of course we need six buckets of water and everything else is going to be building blocks. Uh, so we can figure out how we want them to look. Use any building blocks, of course. You can have it floating in midair if you wanted to, but you guys know me. I like making my builds look nice. So the first thing that we're going to start off with is going to be a 6x3 hole in the ground. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. It's a 6x3 hole in the ground. The uh, back end of your water mill is going to have a line of blocks like this. So whichever side you want the back to be, go ahead and put this one row over so that you have one row that can capture the water later on. And then when you look at this guy, the outside, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, in the middle, one, two, three, four, we're gonna go two over from the uh, blocker that we just put up right about here. So let's go ahead and put some placeholder blocks. We're gonna put stone, one, two up, and the kinetic dynamo. And this is the important part right here. This black side right here is where the water wheels will attach. All of the other sides are more or less blank. So you have to put uh, the black side in the direction that you want the water wheels to be spinning in. So if I wanted this to be on the other side, I would have put it over here, and then I would have faced it toward the inside. Go ahead and get rid of these placeholder blocks. And we can put our water wheel segments in right here. One, two, three. Big boys. There we go. This is going to be fairly simple. Uh, right here where you put your little water breaker line, we're gonna go up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna go across. One, two, three, 
core. And then of course it's the same same way over here. Six down here if you wanted to line it up. On this side here, since uh, I kind of dropped myself down already, we're going to put another pillar right about here. So one, uh, one edge off and uh, in the center right here. We're going to go up. And then we're going to cross this through. This will block the water on this side. And we're going to do the same over here. Like so. This will block the water. And then I'll break away all of the blocks that uh, that aren't required later on. So you guys can see the minimum amount of blocks. Because the way the blocks work is uh, they more or less just keep the water from spilling out the sides. So for this design, all we're going to need are six buckets of water. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to put three back here. One. Two. And three. And these guys, they flow this direction into the hole that we made so it won't spill out anywhere. And that little bit of motion from the water will make the water wheel turn just a little bit. That's how you get it to uh, run at 100% efficiency. You can do less, uh, but then the generator, the kinetic generator, won't gather as much. So in 1.12, we had to uh, use nine water blocks. In uh, 1.18, I figured out that you only need to use a total of six water blocks because the ones we're going to put on top they're going to touch the top they're going to hit here and then they're going to go in this direction over here let me make 100 percent sure by blocking this area off and let's go up again let's break these guys travel back up there we go and let's put in three more water blocks right here one two, and three. And you see how this guy started going a lot faster? There we go. Now it's spinning at the same speed as the other unit that's across from it. And let's see, we can break these. We can break these. This entire side can be broken down. So, and then yeah, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. This block is required because it does spill out the water over here. So we got, we have to have a block here to block the water. And of course the water block touching down here will refresh this block. So we have to break this one to make it fit back inside there. So that block has to stay. All of the other blocks that are along the top have to stay because the water does go in that direction it'll spill out in all of these directions but down here the only thing you need is this one hole it'll fill and fit in there and then when it touches here it spills over over here so we can get rid of these guys and then i can clean up this area a little bit more right have it spill into my basement that's how we do it right Ugh. yeah it's spilling into my basement let's just ignore that for a little bit but what I can do is I can clean this up and make it look like the other unit real quick. All right, so there we go. We have it cleaned up and it looks just like the other unit. Like I said, you can use any kinds of blocks as long as the water is being blocked. Uh, the way that these, this guy works is there's three blocks here that push, and then there's three blocks up top that push. And when they hit the ground, they also cover these three blocks that push in this direction as well. So they look pretty spiffy like this. I like it. it looks nice. And it's right outside our kitchen window, so the aesthetic looks pretty cool. Before we end the episode, though, on passive power, let me also make one item that is uh, now renamed for Immersive Engineering 1.18. And... Uh, 
It is now called the MV Accumulator. Before it was the MV Capacitor, I wanted to go straight into HV Capacitors because that's what I always did, because it has uh, a bigger buffer, so Accumulator. And now these dudes, they require HOP graphite ingots to make HV Accumulators. So steel, treated wood, aluminum plates, bucket of redstone acid, which is redstone dust and water, but HOP graphite ingots, which of course we all know is that super annoying ingot that you have to make with HOP graphite dust, which comes from an industrial squeezer with coke dust. That's how we make the HOP. And we smelt it, of course, to turn it into an ingot. So since the HV accumulator is out of our reach for the beginning, I'm going to settle with an MV accumulator. There really is no difference other than the fact that the MV has a bigger uh, uh, buffer than the LV. The LV accumulator is going to be lead plate, iron, treated wood, and a bucket of redstone acid, which we'll be able to make really easy like that. Let's go ahead and make the MV accumulator. What are we missing? We're missing an iron plate and we're missing a nickel plate. Let's go ahead and plus these dudes in after I grab my trusty hammer. Let's make one iron plate. And let's also make one nickel plate. It didn't register my hammer? Come on. Probably because it has durability damage. There's our nickel plates. And here is our new MV accumulator. So what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to put him down on the ground first. And what we're going to do is we're going to set every side to input. By right clicking once. Blue is input. Orange is output. So we're going to set all of the sides to blue input. And let me make sure when we pick it up and we put it back down. Yep, it keeps what we programmed it as. So all of the sides are now input, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this dude right in between both of the kinetic dynamos, like so. So the way these uh, water wheels and the kin kinetic dynamos work, uh, with the speed that they're running at max speed right now with three water wheels, they should be generating 90 RF a tick each, and that is 100% passive power. I can walk away from this right now and it will continue to, to do 180 RF a tick without any uh, additional maintenance. So this dude, what we're going to do is now that all the sides are set to input, we know for a fact that they're getting input from both sides. This guy, whichever direction we want, we can set it to output and we can make our cables that we're looking for. Now we have a battery in here and uh, we're making power, we're making passive power. Thank you so much for joining me today. Smash like to keep this series going and click on my dude here to subscribe for more modded Minecraft. If you wanna see the full unedited progress, hit up my Twitch at twitch.tv slash ddanicus. I put the link in the description below for you guys.